But first of all, let's start off um, telling about a little bit about ourselves. This is the first episode. Um, I'm Nathan Dugas. Um, <laughs> we can always keep, just keep it rolling, man. You can edit it later. Yeah, we can always edit it later. Um, but we're leaving that in. We're, we're, we're <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Frozen Gamers Podcast. I am your host, Nathan Dugas. Jonathan Flam. Ben Greeson. And we are going to talk to you about games today. But first of all, let's start off um, telling about a little bit about ourselves. This is the first episode. We're all from Alaska. That's, that's why we are the Frozen Gamers Podcast. Um, just some, some things about myself as far as gaming goes. Um, I have owned a wide variety of systems throughout the years. Um, game, uh, Sega Genesis, Nintendo 64, GameCube, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, um, PSP, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket. Actually, I guess I never had a Game Boy Color. Um, DS, 3DS, 3DS XL. <laughs> A Wii, Wii U, good variety. PSD. Yeah, so a good variety of systems. Nice. Um, John? Yeah, uh, Jonathan Flam, and um, really got started with an NES that a neighbor gave me, good old school console, starting with Duck Hunt and whatnot, and then got an N64, really didn't touch consoles till late PS3. Picked that one up, and then really got heavy into PC gaming as well. Nice. Uh, I'm Ben Greeson. Let's see. Um, started out like Jonathan did with the original NES, but uh, really didn't get that much into gaming until Nintendo 64. And then I had an Xbox and an Xbox 360 and a PS3. Yeah. <laughs> Good mixture there of all the different yeah. systems. Oh, and a GameCube. I almost forgot. Yeah. The one that you bought from me. <laughs> and, and the, uh, well, I guess, I guess Daniel bought it from me, but yeah, I don't but I, but I played it. You none, played it more than you did? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I forgot that I also have a uh, regular Nintendo and um, PC. Lots yeah. of PC games. I think, I think you got us covered for the, the consoles, <laughs> Nathan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, well, uh, top three favorite games. Ben? Ooh. That's a tough one. Oh, man. Uh... Put me on the spot. <laughs> uh, let me think about this. Okay, top three favorite games. Well, obviously Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Oh, that's not fair. Is on the list. Um, I would say probably Halo. Halo, the original Halo, uh, just because I don't know, nostalgic, and uh, I'm gonna say Left for Dead. Ooh, because nice pick. probably the probably the most addictive game I've played. It's a toss-up between Left 4 Dead and uh, Grand Theft Auto 4 for the third spot. But I'm going to go Left 4 Dead because I probably played it more. <laughs> more hours wasted. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you go on the spot. Okay, um, well, I have to say my number one favorite is definitely Chrono Trigger. Ooh. I, I've, I've played all the different iterations that have come out. <clears throat> um, overall, I have to say the DS version is my favorite just because it's portable and even though the extra content isn't all that exciting. It's it's still pretty cool. Uh -huh. um, my second favorite has to be Portal Two by mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. I've I have put a good seventy <clears throat> hours into that game, just replaying through, doing achievements, things like that, and um, still haven't gotten everything. Probably won't even bother. But yeah, and my third one, that one's a little bit more tough. So I'm gonna have to say probably would have to be Batman Arkham City. Ooh, nice Good pick. choice. Nice pick. Good. Okay, nice. I guess it comes down to me. Um, Pressure's on. I know, right? <laughs> no, no repeats. Oh, no, that's not fair. Because <laughs> the Zelda series definitely ranks up there pretty high, for sure. It's a hard So, choice. So I'm going to cheat and just say that the Zelda series, period. Uh, but Ocarina of Time, I've probably played like eight times. So okay. that that's up there pretty high. 
Um, but for a little more current, right now, Borderlands 2 is up there really high um, for current gen stuff. I've sunk too many hours into that game. And then um, probably also Battlefield 3, because again, I've sunk a lot of hours into that game, if, if you have to pin me down to current gen stuff. Well, you, you, nice. it's just it's just whatever. I mean, remember my well, my favorite. Was that's Chrono what I was. Trigger. That's what I was going with. Current. Yeah, yeah. and I, I really should have said Zelda too, because I mean, obviously Zelda's been a big favorite of mine for years, and uh-huh. it's just kind of thinking about more of the ones I've put the most time into lately, and I'd I'd have to say that I'd probably put more time into Arkham City than many other games. But yeah, um, I think I have like three hundred hours in Battlefield. That's nice. It's sad. <laughs> Well, it's yeah. not too bad. That's only, I don't know, a couple weeks. Oh, that's just a couple weeks of my you know, life. You know, yeah. no I mean, you think how many, how many hours you spend at a full-time job, you know? There you go. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I've put prob- I put a, about probably around 90, 90 to 95 hours in the Monster Hunter 3, which I've been playing lately, yeah. which is a perfect segue into uh, what we're currently playing and watching. Um, that's one I really, really enjoy because it's... It's just crazy addictive, and there's there's so much to do. It's you're, fantastic. you're playing the 3DS version, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm playing the 3DS version, okay. and it is fantastic. Mm-hmm. It looks beautiful. Um, I mean, it's not you know HD graphics or anything, but the 3D effect just makes everything pop. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, yeah. Um, you know, it just adds so much depth to the game. It looks a lot better than the Wii version did, in my opinion, oh, yeah. which is what I had before. And um, I still want to get the Wii U version so I can play online, but... Oh, I'd be interested to see the comparison between the 3D and the high high res graphics. Yeah, I could even get, show you guys the demo later because yeah. I do have that on the Wii U. Pretty right. sweet. But yeah, apart from that, um, I guess I haven't really been playing much else. I mean, I I just finished up a couple of GameCube games, both uh, Luigi's Mansion and uh, Paper Mario: Thousand Year Door. Oh. But apart from that, I, I haven't really been playing much, mostly just because I'm kind of. Um, trying to decide what game I want to play next. Fair enough. It's funny that you mentioned GameCube because I'm per- currently playing your copy of uh, Wind Waker right now nice. on GameCube and really liking the art style. It's definitely different, that's for sure. Nice. Not not used to that compared to the other Zeldas. But then also for PS3, just finished up Heavy Rain, nice. which was a very exciting game. Uh, a lot of twists that I didn't see coming. I would recommend it. Definitely a mature title, but really good. Wasn't that the name of the movie that Eddie Murphy's character is in in the movie Bullfinger? Oh, it could have been. I don't know. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, I was wondering. But, uh, yeah, um, I, haven't, I haven't been playing anything, actually, recently, uh, because I don't have a television currently. <laughs> but uh, I have been watching lots of stuff on my laptop. Uh, went back, watched a couple seasons of the show Dexter, which, uh, which I'm a big fan of. And even though... Um, as the seasons go on, you can kind of maybe see the formulas that they're using being reused over and over again. Um, so far, it's still fresh. I'm only to the end of season <laughs> six. So, um, yeah, so I've been watching that. And I went back and rewatched all of uh, Arrested Development. Those are fantastic. In, yeah, in, <laughs> in the past couple weeks. So that was a treat. And uh, I watched the movie The Happening. By, uh, <laughs> By M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, my goodness. And I watched Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Yes. Wait, <laughs> so is that the we, second one? We before, yeah, the, 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 the one where Raiden one. gets a haircut. Yes. Yeah. The one with uh, possibly the best movie <laughs> line ever <laughs> at the beginning uh, when one of the characters says, Mom, you're alive. And she says, Too bad you will die. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. So so I, uh, I don't think I ever actually made it through the second one. Yeah. Really? I, I watched the first I one, and then it was either. like they were on back-to-back on TV the one time, yeah. and I couldn't I couldn't do the second one. Yeah, well, I mean, I was just bored. I had it, I have it on a DVD with the first Mortal Kombat. Oh, it's then I got in the $5 bin at Walmart. Nice. And I basically just bought for $2. the first one. No. Yeah, but I, <laughs> Let's see if there's riff tracks for those. They're probably be hilarious. There should, those, should, those should be. Those should be fantastic. Sure. The first one, I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say the first Mortal Kombat is not bad. I'll go out on a limb and say <laughs> it is one of the best video game movies ever. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll go out further on that limb and say that it is the single best video game adaptation of a movie ever made. 
period. That's the, 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 best mo- the best movie based on a fighting game. <laughs> on, on a fighting game. Okay. On a game. Yeah, on a game. game. <laughs> oh, in- <laughs> including Battleship. You can, you can broaden this <laughs> to board <laughs> games. Broaden okay. this to board games if you want. I mean, name a better video game movie. I don't think you can do it. Well, te- on, technically you could count Wreck-It Ralph, but... Not a real. I mean, that's, that's just yeah. I know it's it's not a movie based on a video game, even though it does have video game characters in it. Yeah, and it's pretty awesome. So, yeah, yeah. that's true. The Tomb Raiders were pretty awful. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, listeners, write in. Let us know. Yeah, if we end up having it. <laughs> 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 how how thin of a limb has Ben on? <laughs> well, you guys, you guys haven't broken it yet, so I'm just going to keep standing here until you. Uh, so you come up with something. I don't know, it's kind of fun watching you balance. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's what I've been doing, watching good TV shows, bad movies, and not playing any video games at all. <laughs> so that's my Well, opinion. hey, you can always just get, like, a cheap TV from the thrift store, and then... I went look looking for one. I don't, I don't think they have one, but I'll, I'll double they, check. They, they do. They're, like, underneath the clothes racks or something. Okay, gotcha. I mean, they're, they're not great, but, you know, at least for... If you have any non-HD consoles, then uh-huh. it looks great. Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, I'll have to go check that out because I have a big box of games in cool. my house. Like, mostly my brother's games. Uh, yeah. yeah. To be honest, my brother's a much bigger gamer than I am, but I'm yeah. a much better movie and TV person than he <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, that's what, very true. What system do you have with you right now? Uh, Xbox. Okay. The original yes. or? Um, 360. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you you can play HD games to a degree on on a regular TV. It just it it doesn't look as sharp, obviously. Yeah. And, I mean, it works. You know, I I found though that um, well, we, we got an old TV that we bought from um, someone local for like twenty bucks, and it's yeah. I think like a twenty seven inch or something. You know, it's kind know. of a heavy thing, that be- heavier than our HD, and <laughs> but it, it's great for uh, for playing old video games and. Um, for watching TV shows that are in full screen. Yeah, be, I made the mistake of throwing a PS1 disc into my PS3 not too long ago on my HD TV. Oh, yeah. And suddenly all my memories of Gran Turismo were smashed. <laughs> 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 because it used to be a fantastic game. Now all I yeah. saw were pixels. <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> so, I had a similar experience going back and playing GoldenEye 007. Oh, yeah. GoldenEye. We played uh, it on a projector once. Don't ever do that. Still a fun <laughs> game. It's still a fun game. Uh, I would, I would have gotten so used to having t- uh, two joysticks to mess with. Yep, yep. That, uh, that throws you off. having to stop to look up and down <laughs> yeah. just m- made me really angry. <laughs> I stopped playing. But uh, have, have you played the the one on Wii or? Well, they, they re released it for 360 and PS3 also. I don't think I have. It's no. actually not should, bad. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's quite good. I mean, it's it's very different from the original, but um, like they re- they replace. Pierce Bronson with Daniel Craig, yep. oh, yeah. and they, they kind of reworked the story a little bit, but overall, I mean, even the Wii version looked great, and so, of course, controlling with the Wii remote for me was awesome. Is it a is it a ghost of Hayden Christensen at the Ewok campfire situation <laughs> that we're talking about? No, no, no. It, it's actually very well done. No, um, it, I, and I'll agree, I, I haven't played the full campaign, but I played a little bit on, on Nathan's Wii, and then I got the demo for PS3. And, like, the, the demo level is the damn mission, which I think everyone remembers. Oh, well. absolutely. And it's pretty dog and close, but a lot better set up. And dual right. joysticks. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Sounds with really the Wii version, you can play fun. with dual joysticks, or you can use the uh, remote and nunchuck. Um, yeah. And, I mean, I like using the remote just because of more accuracy. Mm-hmm. And for me, it works great, especially on... Uh, going for silent kills. But that's yeah. another thing I really love about it, stealth. Yeah, they, the they, they added a stealth in. dynamic. Nice. Game, I, I think that I will probably replay that sometime soon and maybe do it with um, with the um, classic modes that you know you actually have your health deteriorate and you have to pick up health uh-huh. packs and stuff because, I mean, that's more what I'm used to anyway. Yeah. I mean, it feels kind of cheap you know, having your health regenerate just by sitting yeah. behind a barrier. <laughs> whenever. Well, whenever I would play, I think... The the version I got of uh, Goldeneye was from the the Givenses, the uh, local family, and they had already un- unlocked all the cheats. Yeah. So I would just turn all the cheats on <laughs> and, have, and be a giant headed, long arm 
invincible, Shooting invisible <laughs> being. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, we got in trouble for that. As a matter of fact, because my dad, my dad didn't like the fact that my little brother, who was in like second grade, <laughs> was sneaking up to someone with hunting knives and chopping their face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could understand. Yeah, but I don't know. I was a little mad at my brother for that one because that was like a demo because we were trying to convince our dad that it wasn't that bad of a game. But it didn't it, go over so But good. Daniel didn't understand the, the purpose of it. So he just started killing people with hunting knives immediately. But uh, but that's that's a different story. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, well, so. back on topic, what have you been watching lately, John? Oh, man. Uh, a little bit of everything. Definitely How I Met Your Mother. That show is hilarious. Um, and then Castle, for sure. That's a really good good mystery crime fighter. And, I mean, it's a fulfilling. Yeah, you you gotta course. love him. So, and with that segue, Firefly holds a place in my heart. Yeah, Throw that out there. But what about you, Nathan? Um, well, I mean, I, I'm generally keeping up on most of the TV shows um, that I've been watching, like How I Met Your Mother and The Office, and um, which is almost done, and um, Person of Interest, which is one of my favorites. Oh, that's true. I've been watching that. That's a good one. Castle, of course. Um, Game of Thrones, I'm behind by a couple of episodes. In fact, actually, now I guess I'm behind by about three episodes now, because it was just two, but our satellite wasn't working this weekend, so the third one didn't record. So I'll just have to get it on. But that's not too much of a problem. Because thankfully, HBO has a an app that or, I mean, you can go online if you have um, if you're subscribed to HBO, you can uh, view any of the TV shows online, anything that's aired before. Oh, that's nice. There. I so, wish more people would do that. That that'll be something nice for you know, doing that. And since Megan's working late, I can um, I can watch it because it's not something that she watches. Oh, yeah. Real quick, uh, if we could do a quick detour, um, I would just be interested to, to talk to Nathan, and maybe you see him too, I don't know. Oh, sure. But uh, I know that Nathan and I had a discussion uh, about a week ago, and uh, before I had seen seasons five and six of, of Dexter, and Nathan had told me that they were not good seasons, and I would just like to, to hear his, his reasoning <laughs> for that. Because in some ways, I, I do agree I mean, well, I, mean I, I wouldn't say they were bad seasons. They just weren't as good. Right. I mean, like, season five, the main thing was they just had so many things that were unresolved, so many plot threads that were brought up mm-hmm. or that, you know, they just kind of died real quickly. Yeah. You know, the fact that there was um, the that uh, gang that was cutting off people's heads. Or oh, man. Was, that, I mean, was, that just never really got resolved. What, what was um, up with that? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was just one of those things they brought up, but they... They never really did anything yeah. with it, um, and then the um, what was the guy's name? Lundy or something? No, 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 not Lundy. Lundy was the was older the dude FBI that got guy, shot. The, the the guy that that was spoiler alert by was, the way. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> if if they haven't seen it, then too bad. But yeah, yeah. spoiler. Um, Screw you. The, the guy that was, that was tracking Dexter and ended up getting killed by him. Um, Which one? <laughs> the, the, <laughs> well, no, the, he he was the the ex cop that got outed for being a. Uh, Jerk face, basically, or whatever it was. Okay. Trying to get drugs. Oh yeah, in the yeah. Band. Played by what's his face? That dude. I know I've seen that guy in something else. Yeah, I can't remember. But uh, I agree with you there. I thought I thought I liked season five a little more than season six, simply yeah. because I could not buy Colin Hanks as any kind of <laughs> convincing serial killer. <laughs> yeah, he was just too nice of a guy. Like I don't know. Yeah. The, the whole twist at the end, I, I liked. I genuinely didn't see that coming as far as his relationship with his uh, uh, college professor or whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I guess I guess probably part of the reason why I saw it coming was because it was kind of predicted. I mean, I'm like, I, I had been reading reviews on IGN as it was airing, and right. it was kind of predicted that, that was the twist, and I was really hoping that they weren't going to go that direction because it was just... It was too obvious, and it was you know not yeah. at all original, and Maybe so I, I pretty coming. much knew it was coming, and was hoping it wasn't, and then it did. And yeah, I mean it wasn't horrible. I mean it wasn't it wasn't a bad season. It just wasn't anywhere near as good as the previous right. seasons. And you've seen season seven, right? Yeah. So 
I'm not asking you for any specifics, but um, the lab tech that was designing that video game that had the, the prosthetic hand or whatever, does that ever spin into anything or not? No. No, he, okay. He, he's just he's just a jerk. Right. Because and, Okay. Yeah. You, you'll, you'll see what happens with him. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I just wanted to, I just want, I want to talk about that real quick. Because I also have my thoughts on the seasons, like, like I was kind of alluding to before, you start to really see how they keep recycling the same story arcs over and over again, especially with, like, Deb and her relationships with uh, bad criminal dudes. Except Quinn, but that's a different story. But yeah. Quinn's which, just a douche. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> which is kind of it's kind of unfortunate because I really liked his character when I when he first showed up on the yeah. show. He, yeah, he was he was pretty reasonable at first, but then he just him. started to get annoying, and then he got into this whole oh, I suspect Dexter of you know being a bad, bad guy, and then he backed off. And yeah, he's just going through his ridiculous mood swings. I mean, more mood swings than a girl in her period. I mean, I don't know what it was. It was just... Well, yeah, and that's not speaking about my wife, by the way. She actually has <laughs> mood swings, really. Oh, you're in the which dog is, house. Which is awesome. <laughs> it's awesome for me that she doesn't go through mood swings. But anyway, this nice, is, that's not... Nice save, me. But, nice uh, save. Yeah, I always thought of him as just kind of a replacement for that other, uh, the, the black guy, Dokes, was it? Oh, yeah. Who, yeah, who got killed. Same character, really. Just kind of the suspicious co-worker of Dexter's that's always sniffing around, kind of yeah. acting like they know something, even if they don't. And you, you already finished season six, right? Yes. I yeah, guess. so I... Well, when I saw some... You know, actually, maybe I'm mixing seasons up. I, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Oh, don't I, worry about it, dude. Because well, they I, don't even have season seven at the video oh, store, yeah. so... Well, it doesn't matter. I, I, don't, I don't want to spoil it for you anyway because yeah. it's a really good season. Okay. It's really well done. Good. And, you know, obviously the big twist at the end of season six definitely set a whole new tone for the series. And season eight, which is what's going to be starting up, I think, at the end of June, yeah. it's going to be the last season. They're yeah. finally finishing it off. Really? Nice. So I, I'm, I'm glad that they are. I'm going to be really curious to see what happens with all of that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. By the way, no no disrespect to Colin Hanks if you're, if you're listening to this. <laughs> yes, because Colin Hanks is going to listen to it. He, he could. He could. I think you're a fine. I think you're a fine actor. Just, I just couldn't buy you as a sociopath. That actually might all. be a compliment, though. Yeah. What? That he was unconvincing. In his head? <laughs> no, that he's not a sociopath. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well. I don't know. I I watched like three, four episodes of the show, and it just doesn't do it for a no man to give it another shot. But, yeah. I mean, it, I it gets really interesting. It's very, it's a dark kind of humor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the thing is, is, if you look at Dexter, you kind of see that while what he's doing is wrong in many respects, at the same time, there's also, you know, a rightness to it, only in that he mm-hmm. is taking out people who, who should be killed. Right, I mean, right. But at the same time, you know, then... He also gets a lot of enjoyment out of it, which is a whole different story. Kind of yeah. creepy. That's yeah. you know, more based on him, what happened to him. Well, that's yeah, that's what but, makes the show so yeah. interesting to me. Is that you know, you wonder whether he's doing the right thing because he's he's doing things that are somewhat good in a way, yeah. but he's not doing them because of some innate desire to do them. He's just doing them because he was trained, basically. Yeah, like well, an and, and because he, he wants, he has this urge to kill. Right. But, anyway. But, yeah. We, we, we won't really spoil anything, and I don't think we really spoiled much of anything for you anyway. Except so, that uh, Colin Hanks is a killer. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, you know, that just ruined everything for probably me now, now so. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> probably. I <probably> spoiled some <laughs> of the season for you, but. <laughs> That's yeah. okay, I don't need, well, we'll see, I might give it another go. Yeah. And if you don't, you know, I don't think you'll really be missing out if you don't watch it. It was right. just... Well, well I'm interested. I got shows. like 18 other TV shows I'm trying to keep up yeah, on right I'm now. Sure I finally that. finished The Walking Dead for the season. Oh, I need to catch up on that. That, that was I, good. I'm so far behind in that. I mean, because of course the season's already over, and I've only seen like the first three or four episodes of the season. Oh yeah, you're missing out. But it, it AMC doesn't have doesn't have the web episodes on their site, 
and so basically I have to find a way to watch them otherwise online, and I may end up just waiting until it comes out on Blu-ray or something and rent it that way, because it's just it's such a hassle finding decent quality and all that, but yeah. anyway. I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. This is like a run to the airport movie Can I catch you before you leave? This is the yellow line The choice is yours Resent or receive You're half asleep but wide awake Your frozen is the ice you bound To break And I'm done Tiptoeing around you Well, moving on to news games. Um, now, how much interest do you guys have in talking about the Nintendo Direct? Which I, I know nothing about neither it. Neither do I, actually. Well, uh, I'll just briefly go over some of the stuff, and you guys can tell me if you have any thoughts about any of the stuff. Um, games that they've revealed, most of which are for 3DS. Uh, there's one called Mario and Luigi Dream Team. If you played... Um, well, there have been, I think, like three other Mario and Luigi games, one of which was on GBA, or maybe... Yeah, I guess, I guess it's been two other ones. One on GBA and one on DS, I believe. But they're, they're supposed to be really funny RPGs, uh, kind of more along the lines of Super Mario RPG from, for Super Nintendo. Okay, gotcha. Um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just going to derail, derail this, but this is, what, yeah. this is what I'm thinking. Uh, Super Mario Bros. movie. We talk about this already. Yes, yeah, we did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Total brain fart. I what I was say. Fantastic. Just for some, just for some reason, when you mentioned Mario, the only thing I could think of was Bob Hoskins wearing those big uh, <laughs> metal boots. <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry to be really like. Oh, that. It's, it's. I don't it's know. Fun. That one might be right up there, though, with uh, Mortal Kombat. Oh, movie. don't even. Come don't on. even compare them. Come on. That's not even apples and oranges. <laughs> it's ridiculous, Jonathan. Come on. But uh, that sounds pretty cool. I mean, I, I've never played any of the other Mario yeah, RPGs. Yeah, I mean, I, I, haven't, I haven't played those ones. Super Mario RPG, you know, I, I know I might be stoned for this by people who are fans of the game, but I didn't care for it that much. I mean, like, there were some things I really liked about it, but then... I, I really wasn't a fan of the faux 3D graphics because they just kind of made it difficult to judge where to jump and that sort of thing. I guess it was probably more just the platforming aspect of the game that kind of ruined it. Right. But the Paper Mario games are, are hilarious and a lot of fun, and they're easy games. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, moving on. Did you guys uh, play any of the Mario Golf games? Yes. Yes. I played Mario 64, like, religiously. That's exactly Mario, the Mario version Golf. I played. Yeah, on 64. Yeah, yeah, there's one coming out for 3DS. Cool. Looks pretty sweet. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know a lot about it. They haven't given much information other than it's a Mario Golf game coming out for 3DS. Say. And mm -hmm. they've shown some video. It's pretty cool looking. It's pretty fun. Actually, the Wii, the Wii edition, it wasn't really Mario Golf, but the one that came with it. The sports was pretty fun too. Yeah, made me have was a Mario false golf. aspirations that I could golf, and then I tried it for real and it didn't work. I can't so remember if there was a Mario <laughs> a golf different. game. On Wii yeah, or just not. a touch. I, mean, I know that there was a Mario Golf game. There was one for Nintendo sixty four, one for Game Boy Color, and you know that might have been the last one. I'm not sure Probably. if there were any other. But it was ones. sweet though, because if you had the color, you could import your character to the sixty four version, That's and it basically be a boss. Nice. Yeah, because the, so, the, the the color version had like leveling up and stuff, didn't it? Uh, or or, like you that. know, you know what? I just lied. That was that was the tennis. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't I, know. I remember totally the, different sport. The, 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 there were some of the some of the games. You know, I mean, there were a couple of sports games like that. But, yeah. But have you played go the golf one or just the tennis? I, I've, I've played the golf. Well, on sixty four, I played both. Okay. Yeah. But on Game of Color, I only played the tennis. Yeah, I I never actually played any of those. I mean, I've, I've kind of always been interested, and whenever I get a Nintendo 64, I'll definitely get Mario Golf. Oh, well, they were um, fun. Yeah, I, I believe it. Um, but yeah, there's one coming out for 3DS. It looks pretty sweet from the video I've seen. Um, you know, and of course, the 3DS on top of having the 3D effect is pretty equivalent to like GameCube in terms of graphics. 
right on. So it's pretty nice. Cool. Um, they're also releasing um, the Game Boy Color games, Oracle of uh, Zelda, Oracle of Seasons, and Oracle of Ages. Interesting. Um, for the 3DS eShop. And that's coming at the end of May, which I'm definitely looking forward to because I never really played those. Yeah. Uh, Link's Awakening, I played, and I love, love that game. Now, which one was that again? Link's Awakening was the one... It, well, it was originally released for Game Boy, and then they re-released it for Game Boy Color. Okay, because that's the one I think I've played yeah. on Game Boy Color. Yeah. Which has been a while since I ever looked at a Game Boy Color. Was it the the Wand of Gamelon? That was the PC? No, Zelda? That, that, that was the, uh, the one made for the... Um, the Philips CDI. That's my one, favorite one of the three. <laughs> <laughs> That's your favorite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't lie to me. <laughs> Did you guys play any of the Yoshi's Island games? No. Yeah. Yeah. I, never played I, I, I played a little bit of the Game Boy Advance port of the original, which is it was pretty fun, but I didn't play it a lot, but there is one of those coming out for 3DS. Which is like cool. Um, either of you fans of Donkey Kong uh, Country... Yes. I, I played those a little bit. My most experience with Donkey Kong, though, was on 64. That was a fun one. Yeah, I played the Super NES one at my cousin's house quite a bit. Yeah, they well, they, they released one a couple years ago for the Donkey Kong Country Returns, and they're re-releasing it for 3DS, so it has uh, 3D graphics, um, new levels... Or well, I should say it has uh, the stereoscopic 3D. So, so basically, it's it's a port of the Wii game, but it has the stereoscopic 3D, which looks fantastic. And then um, it also they've added an easier mode that's kind of more intended for uh, playing on the go, you know, like little snippets at a time. Cool. Okay. Um, I, I've never really been into those games, but it's mostly just my irrational hatred of monkeys. <laughs> that comes down to that, true, though, that, that, that I, I refuse to <laughs> give up on just because I am that way. I'm Man. stubborn. No, monkeys are one of those love them or hate them animals, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and then they finally have Virtual Console coming to the Wii U. It was supposed to be this week, it, or last week actually, and it still has not come. Though they did release the uh, latest system update, and it has made the, the OS way faster. It's okay, like, that, that's what I was going to ask, if yeah. it actually helped at all. It made a humongous difference. I mean, it's like, you know, before it would take, I mean, after the first update, it was like maybe five to ten seconds to get in between things. Uh-huh. Now it's, you know, like two seconds. Awesome. With that. That's nice to have that's a snap here. I mean, it's, it's really much, much faster. And didn't they promise a couple other updates in late summer? Um... I haven't heard anything, but it's possible. I mean, I usually keep up on that stuff, but I don't remember hearing anything about that. I could be wrong. I know that they, they had a couple of updates planned before, um, I mean, during the spring, and they've already done those, too, so I don't know if they're doing anything further than that. But even if they don't, I mean, it's so much faster that I'm perfectly satisfied with the speed right now. Cool. Right on. It was really slow before. <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing that this one's kind of a big one is that they're they're finally going to bring Earthbound to the Virtual Console for Wii U. Um, Earthbound was a re- re- released for Super Nintendo like '94, I want to say '95, something like that, uh-huh. and it didn't sell well at all. So they never brought it to the U.S. Uh, for Wii Virtual Console, and getting a copy of the original cartridge, it's like. 300 bucks at least. That's where the, the guy from Super Smash Bros. Yes, that's where Ness out. comes from. Oh. And um, Lucas in, in Brawl. Well, actually, no, Lucas is from Mother 3, which is a third yeah. in the series. Okay. Am I getting it mixed up, or is this the game where there's supposedly a fetus in the background, the final boss fight? Because that might was an be, urban legend that I had heard somewhere. It, 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 it <laughs> might be true. I, I don't know. I, I only played like maybe 10 minutes of that game. Oh, really? Give or take. But it's, it's one that I would like to play. And so the fact that this is finally coming to the U.S., to the virtual console, I'm, I'm going for it. Because yeah. there's pretty much no other way to get it unless you happen to luck out and find one at a garage sale or something. Which <laughs> and of not course spend be, 300 bucks. Exactly. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, if you look on Amazon, the cheapest you'll find is like $300. Oh Most, I mean, some people are. They're asking twenty thousand. I mean, I don't know who would pay twenty thousand dollars for a game, even if it was, you know, the first edition in you know, uh, 
the original box and all that, which... Well, yeah. some people with money do crazy things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wish so I had true. money so I could do some of those crazy things. Right? <laughs> so I could drop three hundred dollars on Earthbound just because. Uh, oh, yeah, I know. I, awesome. I mean, especially the collector in me because I've started collecting old game consoles. Uh -huh. was, was that for Super Nintendo? Yeah, Super Nintendo. See, they, although I, they did have, they had. Um, well, in Japan, it was. Uh, there was Mother One, which was an uh, NES game. Okay. And then Mother Two was Super Nintendo. And then Mother 3 was Game Boy Advance, and that never made it to the Oh, US. that's part that's of the, the urban one. legend that I read, I'm pretty sure. Sorry. No, no, <laughs> no, no it's no. good. It's cute. Yeah. Just, uh, the back, uh, that the final boss, <laughs> that there was some kind of psychosomatic complex of the creator possibly having to do with a dead twin brother or something that he said that he made this game to like work through or something. And that the final <laughs> boss was secretly a, a, a red fetus that you could see. Look it up. I'm not crazy. <laughs> oh, I, I, I believe you that, that it's a theory. I just yeah. I, 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 I know nothing about our, this. I was talking to our listeners more than you. <laughs> you know how snooty they are. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of skipped like straight from NES to N64, so I missed yeah. a lot of those. Yeah, I mean, when, when I actually bought my first game console, which and my parents would never let me buy one, I, I mostly just played like a lot of Super Nintendo at friends' houses, and it was mostly just fighting games more than anything else, like Mortal Kombat, absolutely, and Killer Instinct, and Street Fighter, and yes. Clay Fighter, <laughs> things Clay like that. Clay Fighter, nice. <laughs> I completely forgot about that one. But that but yeah, I mean, big. that's mostly what I had played, and I think I played a little bit of Mario here and there, but I ended up buying a Sega Genesis because I was familiar with more of the variety of games, and so I, like, I play a number of different platformers, and in fact, I think that's just about all I had was platformers and fighting games. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so I, I, I kind of missed out on most of the Super Nintendo stuff until I was around 13 years old, and my cousin uh, was living with us for a while, and he, um, he introduced me to all these RPGs, and since then I've been you know, a fan of Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger and all that stuff. And yeah. Also good games. Super Nintendo has a treasure trove of great games, and there are still tons that I want to play. Yeah. Yes, sir. Have you guys played um, either of the Pikmin games? No, my brother's really into them, though. Oh, okay. But I think that's kind of why I avoided playing them, because he's yeah. telling me that I, would, I really like them. Yeah, sure they're, they're, they're like real-time strategy kind of things. Yeah. Um, but it's supposed to be really fun. I, I still have mm -hmm. never actually played them, even though I want to. But anyway, uh, Pikmin 3 is, is one that's being released for Wii U. It was originally supposed to be coming out sometime in the spring, and now it's been pushed back to August, so that's kind of... Okay. Lame. But at the same time, it is a pretty game, and I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, but I almost feel like if they actually take their time on games, like I've seen a lot of games lately that just seem to be rushed from production. Yeah. And then you have like day one patches. And oh, yeah. Stuff I like mean, that. Well, the thing and is, so... Nintendo has always been that company that actually they put more effort into their games. They would rather release something that's a quality product delayed than release something, you know, quicker. And have to you know fix it. And I mean, yeah. Exactly. Now, of course, patches are something that can be done. But Nintendo is still one of those companies that they don't do it unless it's needed. Which is which is appreciated because yeah, they, or uh, patches are nice and good to have. But when you have like fifteen for a game and it just came out a month ago, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it's nice to actually get a game that's in perfect working order when you get it, and yeah. that the only bug is if you just happen to do a certain sequence that's nearly impossible to complete, like that supposed game-breaking uh, bug for Skyward Sword, or well, I guess it wasn't really supposed that it was a game-breaking bug, but it was only something that if you did like these certain things <coughs> in a certain order... Yeah, then um, it would break that, the quest. That it would break the quest, and you'd... I, I never game. ran into it, thankfully. Well, but, but I think they did release a patch for that. Yeah, they had a game save. I saw that in the store when I was playing through, but... You know, I mean, like, for example, Sky Skyrim for PS3 comes to mind. That's been plagued with impossible play yeah. issues since day one. I think just now they finally got it figured out. But how much uh, how much complaining, like, is, is complaining about actually doing anything, I wonder? I don't know. Because well, it, it to a degree. I mean, it just depends on whether it's a technical thing or if it's just, you know, a general thing. Like, 
you know, people complaining about a game being too hard or whatever right. most of the time. I mean, I'm just wondering right. if uh, if there's a way to fix this problem because it seems like these companies, they keep coming out with these games that are full of glitches, but it's okay because people will buy them anyway and you know, right. gripe about the glitches, but still buy and play them. Yeah. Even with and the they, they can always patch them later, which is what, unfortunately, um, too many companies, you know, well, I should say the higher-ups at least, especially, you know, like with EA. That's the one that was coming to mind. <laughs> they'll yeah. just, you know, they'll do whatever they can to, to make money, and then even if it's, even if the game is practically broken, uh-huh. they'll, you know, fix some things later, but they just, you know, get it out there, get it out there. It doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. Get yeah. it out there, we can always fix it later. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just, that's something that tends to separate Nintendo. And that's not saying all companies, apart from Nintendo, are... Garbage. You know, garbage like that. <laughs> well, but, Nintendo has its own flaws. Oh, but yeah, of course. Overall, they do put out a good quality product yeah. when it, they release it. Yeah, so. I mean, that, that's that's the main thing, is that, you know, usually the, there are rarely game-breaking bugs or, you know, bugs that are serious enough to where it actually causes problems. Right. Um, since we were just talking about Skyrim, we'll get to that uh, something about Skyrim here in just a minute, but just one last thing from the Nintendo Direct is... Uh, they are doing a sequel, or, well, it hasn't been determined if it's an actual sequel, but to Link to the Past, which is uh, the Zelda game from Super Nintendo. Interesting. Oh, wow. And it's going to be on 3DS. Um, later, I'll, I can show you guys the trailer. It looks pretty awesome. I, I never played through Link to the Past, but I've heard a lot of people say it's their favorite Zelda game, and um, it looks pretty cool. I mean, it looks like it's going to be very awesome. It's set in the same world as as the original Link to the Past, and of course, it's it's also top down view, which is something they haven't done in a while, or at least not quite like that. I mean, they had the pseudo top down thing with the Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, but it wasn't quite the same thing. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know if you guys have played the original Link to the Past at all. I have not. Like, I haven't. No. Never heard of it. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of Zelda games that were for either handheld or different systems that just didn't hear about or whatnot. And it sounds like I have to buy 3DS to play them. Yeah, well, <laughs> I keep telling you buy one and you know buy the XL because the XL has basically improved all the things that were wrong with the original 3DS. You know, it, as long as you're not one of those people who actually cares about the second s- circle pad, and personally, I don't think it's needed. Even though I'm looking forward to getting my um, mine for my XL, yeah, I'm still waiting for. It. No, I'm just becoming more of a PC gamer the more I play. No, I can understand <laughs> that. I mean, PC gaming is great. But yeah, yeah. Well, onto the Skyrim thing. Uh, they are releasing Skyrim Legendary Edition, which includes all of the DLC. It has officially announced. Okay. So, I mean, if I didn't already have Skyrim, I would consider that. Of course, then again, I put almost no time into Skyrim, so <laughs> it I is, probably would It is vast. It's, it, it's pretty just, ridiculous. It's too big for me. It's oh, too see, big I like game. it. I mean, what, what I mean is, is that, you know, like, it's it's a pretty game. I, I like a lot of things about it, but it's just, it's overwhelming. You know, the the fact that, basically, it's an endless amount of stuff to do, and I, I like to actually be able to finish a game. <laughs> and then I can always go back and play it again sometime in the future, right? rather than it being a game that I'm never really done with. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I don't know, I'd almost say that's its biggest pro and con, then. Yeah. For some people, that's that's definitely a bonus. They call, it, they call it immersive, right? That's yeah, yeah exactly. For it. It is. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's a great game. It's just... I, I like I like my RPGs that actually have an end to them and that I can finish all the way. Right. I just like games in general that I can actually finish. <laughs> we are also a perfectionist when it comes to that hundred percent completion. Yeah, to a degree. <laughs> Art and City, I've already given up on trying to get a hundred percent, mostly because I don't care about the stupid Riddler challenges. <laughs> How could you not care about? It? <laughs> but they're it's oh, really well, I, I should I should say I don't care about the ones that are not part of the main game. Right. I don't blame you there. <laughs> It's just, you know, oh, you know, defeat this many foes in this much time, or, yeah. you know, get this high of a score on this particular stage. It's just, 
How did the Riddler get so much power anyway in Arkham? He always uh, seemed like one of the more low rent Batman villains. It's a know. good question because he was even in the the first one, Ar- Asylum. Yeah. yeah, and he always struck me as just kind of a knockoff Joker, like an unfunny <laughs> Joker would be the Riddler. My my memory of Riddler is like from the, the old original Batman like TV show, the cartoon. You know, it was oh, so bad. The Adam West one? It, no, it was like the one even before that, like. Uh, where it still said "bam" and "pow" on the screen. Well, that was yeah. the Adam West. Oh, was it Adam West? Yeah, okay, that was, that was the that's the right. TV show. Yeah, wow. it, it was intended to be more of a comedy anyway. Oh, it's just oh. that's my always envision of of Riddler, and I'm just yeah. like, oh gosh, I can't take him serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I really enjoyed the uh, you know, the other Riddler challenges, finding the trophies and um, solving the riddles, mm-hmm. and some of the stuff associated with finding him in that game I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, some was pretty fun. But that's just kind of the the collector in me that enjoys that kind of stuff. Let's see here. Um, other news? Well, there's um, related to Earthbound, there's, um, you know, Mother 3, like I said, has never been released in the U.S. Some fans have offered to give a free translation to Nintendo. So that they'll release it in the U.S. Because oh, wow. one of the major things is you know the cost of localization is just insane, and you know the time it takes to do it with such a huge game is you know a whole different story. And so some fans have said you know we have translated the game and we'll give it to you for free if you'll release it in the U.S. Well, that's dedication right there. Yeah, uh, and so far we haven't heard anything from whether or not Nintendo is actually going to do that. Um. Let's see here, other stuff. There's an expansion for Dishonored out. Actually, um, I think there's two, technically. Is there two? Yeah, the first one was more just an add-ons, but they still called it more DLC. Yeah, this one's actual, like, additional um, story, content. story content, Knife of Dunwalls. Which, which is a fantastic game, by the way. I, have not, I haven't played the DLC yet, but it was, it was very interesting. Um, more of a steampunk type of setup, the way that they had the world that... Um, Everything runs off of whale oil, and uh, cool. But still, like your choices still have consequences. If you go the sneaky route, you're rewarded differently than if you just go and kill everybody. Uh-huh. Um, good dynamics for the game. I, I highly enjoyed that one. Yeah, that's one I'm I'm more interested in than than Skyrim and stuff. And I mean, I put a, good, a decent amount of time into Oblivion, and I'll probably play more of Skyrim at some point. But yeah. I do have a pretty good backlog of games that. <laughs> I don't really... I'm not in any rush to play yeah. Skyrim. Oh, sure. Well, well, the nice thing about the way they did Dishonored is it has that open feel in that each level you can go about it how you want and to complete the objective. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, it's linear in that you still have to follow the story. You still yeah. have to complete the objective mm-hmm. however. Which is know. one of the reasons why I know I would enjoy it. So, yeah. It's definitely unique in that aspect. There's also a Metal Gear collection coming out. I mean, they already had the HD collection, which just had uh, the first two Metal Gear games, or the first three Metal Gear games, and um, what was it, Peace Walker, which I believe was originally a PC game, or not PSC, PSP. Um, But they're releasing a complete collection that has all the Metal Gear Solid games, um, including... Uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 and Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, um, the HD version. It also includes uh, the Metal Gear Solid uh, VR missions and um, it includes two digital graphic novels. Interesting. Huh. That's one game series that I've never gotten into, but I, I might actually consider it with that. Metal Gear Solid? Yeah. I played the original for. Uh... I, or maybe it wasn't the original original. Well, but the, the original Metal Gear Solid was for PlayStation. Right, that's the one I played. Yeah, I have, I have Metal Gear for, for NES, and that one's pretty funny. It yeah, is it's a hard fun. game. The, and the translations are hilarious. <laughs> I feel asleep. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't get that. <laughs> yeah, but that's one I've been kind of interested in, and I've, I've just not gotten. And You know, I, I might pick up that, that collection at some point. But I'm, I'm also kind of debating about whether or not I want to get uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 for 3DS because it is a, I mean, pretty much a, a perfect port of the 
PlayStation 2 game, except with the added 3D effect. Was that the one you had the demo of? Yeah. Yeah, that one played really well. It was pretty Yeah, the, the only thing that was hard about it was, was controlling the, the camera and stuff, because on that you had to use the, the face buttons. Well, but it does great. support the Circle Pad Pro, which, of course, I'm getting, so that, that makes me more tempted to right. try it out. Mm-hmm. Be uh, worth it. Um, have you guys heard about Bethesda's new game? No. The Evil Within. No. It's uh, it's uh, designed. I mean, it's from the uh, Resident Evil creator Shinji Mikami's st- studio Tango GameWorks. I guess it's pretty much just like a gore fest, and so be very <laughs> different from the kind of stuff that Bethesda has put out so far. Interesting. I, I haven't I haven't watched the trailer yet. I've heard it's pretty crazy. Huh. Um, but kind of interesting. I'll probably check it out just because it's Bethesda. Yeah, I'm excited for a couple of the new releases that are going to be coming out. Like, um, I think is it is it Naughty Dog that's doing The Last of Us? That mm-hmm. sounds really interesting too. Um, a lot of interesting things coming out. Yeah, some people have said Last of Us is um, Uncharted with zombies, <laughs> which could be, you know. Yeah. I, well, yeah. Yeah, it didn't really sound that interesting to me. I'm I'm in the minority in that, but of course I wasn't a fan of Uncharted. See, and I loved the Uncharted mm-hmm. games. I, I, I guess I, I just well, I mean, of course I only played through most of the first one, and I just got so sick of the horrible hit detection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, <laughs> the you guys may or may not care about this. I know Scotty would have been if he would be if he was here. Uh, Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen. It's one that they... 13.2? No, I'm just kidding. No. Well, no, they've already had 13.2 and 13.3. Which, um, which okay, uh, if I can go on a tangent right now, is ridiculous that you yeah. would have a 13.2 yeah, 3. Just, yeah, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well... Yeah, I don't know. I understand the thought process behind it, yeah. but, it just, but it's just silly. It reads ridiculous. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> but it's Square Enix, so what do you expect? Well, I mean, you know, um, it could have been a great game. Or, I'm not sure I haven't played it, yeah. but I just, it sounds ridiculous. So, go ahead. Yeah, though. but Versus 13 is one that's been in development since, like, 2006, <laughs> and it just kept getting pushed back. It was originally supposed to be a PlayStation 3 exclusive, and now it looks like they are going to be, that it's probably going to be a next-gen game uh, for PS4 and Possibly also um, seven twenty or whatever it is that whatever they Microsoft calls their next console, mm-hmm. which they're actually revealing on May twenty first. Really? So we'll we'll find out some details about that. When see that comes. see if they learn from Sony's reveal and they actually show the box. <laughs> yeah, n- not everybody cared about that. Oh, I didn't, I, but I, I just thought it was funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I I personally could care less because I've not purchased any of the Xboxes and I have no interest in doing so. I don't even know if I'll buy a PlayStation 4. just depends on what they come out with. Now, if they do uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 or a prequel <laughs> or something like that, mm-hmm. and, or, you know, do Kingdom Hearts 3 on there, that would convince me to buy one. But even then, I'll probably wait a while. Well, well yeah, I, dude, I'm sorry. I gotta take off. Okay. I, I gotta get a phone call at 8 o'clock. All right, well, uh, we'll see you later. And yes. Yeah, take care, man. It's been a pleasure, man. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Hey, thanks for joining in. What's that? Thanks for joining in. No problem. My pleasure. <laughs> See you guys later. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, um, the next thing, this one's kind of a big one, is Nintendo's not doing an E3, E3 press event this year. That's interesting. They're, they're not doing a big presentation. They're still going to be at E3, and they are going to be showing um, f- uh, you know, a number of games. For sure, they're going to be showing their new 3D Mario for Wii U, um, a Mario Kart for Wii U, and going to have at least screenshots, if not some, uh, you know, a trailer or demos, I don't know, of uh, the Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS. So that's going to be interesting, though, because, you know, the E3 event has always been, you know, kind of their big way of showing stuff off and. You know, we don't really know for sure what the reason is behind that. I wonder if they're just trying to save another big event for later, or what Well, the one of the things is. that they've been doing lately is they've been doing these Nintendo Direct presentations, which basically, they, it's them talking directly to the fans. Right. And, you know, telling us about all these different things that are, um, 
that are going on with, you know, what games they're bringing out, like, you know, all that stuff we were talking about, all that Nintendo-related stuff was all in the most recent one. Yeah. Their plan right now, they've said that they have, um, like, three or four more Nintendo Directs planned before E3. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they reveal. I'm hoping that they're going to reveal what Retro's new project is. And Retro's the studio that brought Metroid Prime. Oh, okay. Um, and also the Donkey Kong Country Returns. But they've been working on a secret project for a while. There's been some hints here and there and speculation that it could very well be a new Metroid game. It's an interesting strategy, though, that Nintendo's taking then and with the direct presentations. I can see that working out really well. Yeah. Brings the fan base a lot a lot closer, so to speak, to the company. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that there are going to be pluses and minuses about it. I don't think that, despite what some people have been saying, that Nintendo's doomed by any means, just because of, you know, whatever, like Wii U not doing well and that sort of thing. But I'll be interested to see what they do with the Nintendo Directs. I'm really hoping they reveal some more uh, Wii U games, you know, maybe even some more... Um, I don't know, footage especially. I, I imagine that probably Wind Waker HD is not going to be... We're, we're not going to see any actual video from it until maybe E3. Right. It did, it did look later. exciting from the screenshots. Though, yeah, I mean, but it's, but it's one thing I'd like to say about Nintendo, it's, you know, when the PS3 and Xbox 360 first came out, they, they were a bit behind in the facts just of graphics. But Nintendo really chose to go, instead of with graphics, they chose to be unique. And they, they wanted the motion control, which then kicked off everyone else's. So, you know, while they were behind in the graphic run, you know, for the most realistic or whatever crap that everybody else was doing, they, they decided the motion, which was quite kind of a risky move. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and so far it's been working out for them. I mean, heck, look, now you got Kinects, you got... Um, the motion for PS3 move, move yeah. thank you. Um, you know, it kind of kicked off everybody else because they came up with the initial idea. You know, not to say that it's for everybody, but um, they definitely still have a place in the market. I wouldn't say that they're doomed, but they're just being experimental, which is good. Yeah. You know, if, if one company doesn't try it, well, then we're just going to get the same thing, just with a shinier label next time, you know, and nobody wants that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's going to be interesting, especially to see what what the Wii U can do graphically, because there there's no question that it's it's more powerful than the 360 and the PS3. Oh, of course. Despite you know some people saying, oh well, these certain specs are are lower end, but the reality is that you know it's not it's not just about the numbers and that sort of thing. There's more to it than that. They have to actually learn how to use the system and how to take advantage of what it can do. And personally, I've already found that the games are gorgeous. And even if the 720 and the PS4 end up being way better looking, I still don't think it's going to be anywhere near as big of a gap as it was last gen. Oh, sure. Well, I mean, I've seen Batman Arkham City, which has been known to be a very intensive game, and it does look awesome on the Wii U. You know, from the specs that we've seen for PS4, it will be a pretty good powerhouse of a system mm -hmm, current gen. I mean, you know, it, it rivals a lot of custom-built PCs right now. But the matter of the fact is is that Wii U still has a place. It's still unique in its own mm -hmm. bet. Um, you know, I mean, different different people have different niches, and the, the Wii U fits another niche. Yeah, and, you know, the big thing is Wii U just needs more games. I mean, there are some great titles already available, but unfortunately some of those are games that are available on other systems. I mean, right. In fact, a lot of those are games that are available on other systems. And, you know, some people are drawn in by the unique features, like I was with Arkham City on the Wii U, um, but, you know, a lot of people are just like, well, I can play this on my PS3, my 360, my PC, whatever, and it looks great. You know, why do I need to buy it on, on the Nintendo console? Or, you know, I can get this game at a discounted price. Why would I buy a ported version <laughs> to Wii U. Well, I'd like to see a side-by-side -side comparison between Wii U and PS3 then. Yeah, or, well... Because I, I, Arkham I think, City would be blown out of the water on the Wii U. It's so much yeah, better. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that Arkham City does look better. I mean, it has some slowdown here and there, but it's also displaying images to two screens at once. Oh, of course. And, 
you know, there's there's just a lot more going on, and it's never bad, and it's never that bad. I mean, it's not as bad as like playing uh, Oblivion on the PS3, where sometimes it just had insane slowdowns. And I mean, true, it was, you know, that was the very beginning of the PS3's life cycle, and obviously there are games that look way better than Oblivion now that are on PS3, and um, you know, they don't have that slowdown, but even then, they, you know, that the current systems that are out right now, not counting PS4 since it's not out yet, but they, they are just dated. I mean, they've been out for a very long time. They're getting old. Um, so it's interesting to see the, what the next-gen hardware is, is. You know, and Wii U, while it may not be the most powerful, like we've said, I still think it fits a pretty good niche. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, um, a couple households might have a PS4 and a Wii U. You know, it just it happens. It's different, different exclusives for each, different feature set. Um, you know, but that, that makes me think of another part. It was interesting to see what they did for the PS4. A lot of the hardware is by AMD, so I'd be curious to see how that transfers over to PC gaming, if it will be a lot more, if the ports will be easier, streamlined. I'm just mm-hmm. curious. Well, I mean, one of the things that that a lot of the developers were saying at the PS4 event was that the PS4 is way easier to work with than anything right. else they've had, just well, because it's based off of PC architecture. Right, and that's the thing that I think will be interesting because the PS3 was very unique in that I think they had almost had like a cell type architecture, which was very strange. <laughs> but yeah, it's it just will be interesting to see what they what they decide to go with now that. Like you said, it's more based off of the architecture of the PC, and um, I don't know. One can hope, and I know it will never happen, but I really wish there was cross-platform. Yeah. I, I'm going to be interested to see what the PS4 does, but ultimately, you know, it's just going to be about the games. If they, have, if they have some games that really draw my attention, then I would go for it, but even then, I'd probably wait a while. I mean, you know, I waited, like, three years for Final Fantasy XIII, even though that was a game I wanted to play, partially because of the meh reviews that it got, but also because I just didn't want to spend that much on a PS3, and I ended up getting one for 100 bucks. Right. So, you know, for me, I have more of a reason to wait on the PS4, especially since I have a PC that can run just about anything, and, um, you know, even if they have something that's that's a little too more powerful for my PC, which seems kind of unlikely. Um, you know, my Wii U will probably play a lot of those games, and so you know, I, I have I have what I need, and PS4. We'll see if it draws me. Yeah, it's got a lot of interesting talk right now. We'll see how it pans out when it really comes out. That will be the main thing. I I in the same boat. I probably won't get one because I just recently built a PC, and. It'll play everything at the moment. And, and isn't so, your PC more powerful than the PS4? Yeah, actually it is. <laughs> and so, you know, it, it's like, okay, we're good. And I haven't even put all the upgrades into and, it and, yet. And how much did you put into that as far as money goes? <laughs> well, with a monitor and everything, uh, it's a 24-inch monitor. Um, it was uh, 1600 for the whole setup. But it could, be, it could be done a lot cheaper. Yeah, that's that's still not bad at all. I <laughs> not mean, not for an ultimate gaming yeah, right I mean, now. Considering the fact that before I I got my you know three hundred dollar off coupon for this laptop, I spent I mean it would have been I think about fourteen hundred dollars. Right. And I mean yeah, of course it's a laptop, so obviously it's more expensive. Oh sure. You know it's a lot more expensive than building your own, but even still, that's you know that's a pretty good deal. I I was pretty happy with it, and when you consider that the monitor, I almost paid two hundred for it. The actual system itself is a lot cheaper, yeah. and I have room for another video card to run dual, so it's though, pretty good. Though, you know, I would have thought that you would have just grab, grab, blah, 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 gotten <laughs> yourself uh, a TV, because TVs are te- te- usually cheaper than... They they could be. This I, I rounded a little bit. This was a yeah. pretty nice ViewSonic 24-inch LED, and so I could double it as a TV, though, if I wanted to. Yeah. I mean, so. I, I love... You know, even my 32-inch TV. For yeah, that's, my, that's that's a little games. big for gaming up close. That's so. true. When you have a keyboard right next to it, the 24 inches, I don't know if I'd go bigger. Well, yeah, it was I, massive. I guess that's true. <laughs> it is, you know, you, well, you, you sit back is what you do. Okay. 
I mean, it's kind of like when I was playing Mass Effect. I need a bigger on, house <laughs> on my on my PC. You know, on the TV with a, a surround sound and everything. I just had my recliner in front of the TV, and so I'd be leaning back, and so I'd have enough room that it wasn't too big, but I still got all the awesomeness of playing with surround sound on the bigger screen. Right. But yeah, I, that that's a thing that will be interesting. You know, a lot of people are put off by by PC because they say, "Oh, well, you gotta." You gotta build if you have to build a custom rig to get the game. Well, that's not really true because we use computers for everything every exactly. day. So if you decide to spend a little extra and you know help future proof it, you can enjoy the current games exactly. and still do everything that you're already doing with exactly. it. Exactly. You know, and that's the thing. You know, and then down the road, I can overclock my my processor more. I can throw another video card in. Mm-hmm. You know, what can you do with a console? Yeah. Now, not to bash consoles because they do help. They definitely hold a niche. Yeah. They they are very very nice. And developers are working with the same hardware, so they can really streamline it. Yeah. Um, I just choose don't both. All right. <clears throat> well, I only have one more uh, news item on on my list here, and that is regarding Batman: Arkham Origins for PC, 360, PS3, and Wii U. And also, they're releasing ba- Arkham Origins Blackgate, which is going to be a 2D Metroid-style game for 3DS and Vita. Um, Interesting. So is this is this uh, going after Arkham City or is this is a prequel? A prequel. That basically okay. what it's doing is they're looking at Batman's early years. Um, it's going to focus a lot more on the detective side of things um, than the previous ones have. I mean, it'll still have you know the same action and that sort of thing. Right. But it's it's going to have less of an emphasis on that and add more to it as far as. You know, the kinds of things that he does. So I, I think that could be an interesting dynamic. And furthermore, um, to simplify travel, well, since they're actually going to be covering all of Gotham City. That's ridiculous. Um, which, you know, is it's like, I think they said it was three times the size of Arkham City, which was <laughs> huge as it is. Yeah. Um, that's going to, to simplify travel, they're going to have the Batwing. Um, it, oh, awesome. it'll, it, it won't be something that you have to fly yourself. It'll just be kind of you. You call it from certain points, and so more of a fast travel. Exactly, system. Exactly, it's a fast travel system. That that would be. Nice. I think that'll be pretty nifty. I mean, I enjoyed the gliding quite a bit in Arkham City, especially because they really improved it. But it'll still be nice to have something that's a little bit, you know, easier when you have to go longer distances, especially if this, you know, they're going all of Gotham City or whatever it is that they have planned. Right. Well, and I've never been the one to want to run across an entire city just because i got to get to another objective. Exactly. It takes too long. I want to get to the main game. Yeah. But yeah, and the, the one for 3DS and Vita sounds like it could be pretty cool. I mean, I, I'm definitely a big fan of the Metroid games, especially the 2D ones. I mean, Super Metroid is, is definitely my favorite of the, of the Metroid games, even though uh, Metroid Prime is a close second. And it'll just be, you know, kind of fun to play a, a 2D kind of game like that where as you earn power-ups, you can access new areas and that sort oh, of thing. Oh, very cool. So is it more of a spin-off of this one, or is it completely it, it, separate? It's separate. It takes place after um, after Arkham Origins, and it's going to be set in Blackgate Prison. Okay. We'll be interested to see how the, both those roll out. Do you know the release date of them, or is um, it just October announced? 25th. Okay. Yep. So I'm... Uh, that's very high up on my list. I mean, Yet another one, one thing that's that's kind of potentially a bad thing is that it's not being developed by the same company that did the other two Batman games. Okay, it's not being done by Rocksteady. Um, however, the company that's doing, it, which I believe is one of Ubisoft's um, studios, I could be wrong about that. Um, they have said that they have worked with Rocksteady and they're you know trying their best to keep all the things that were great about the original game and, you know, expand upon it rather than... Right, right. Um, you know, completely destroying it. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, that'll be one to look forward to for sure. So any closing thoughts? Well, um, not really. i just glad that we could uh, chat about this stuff and hope to do it some more in the future for sure. Definitely. Well, this has been Frozen Gamers Podcast number one. If you'd like to subscribe to our podcast, you can do so via iTunes. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter at, fr- 
at Frozen Gamers, and you can email us at frozengamerspodcast at gmail.com. We hope you enjoyed it and come back probably next week. Thanks. Across my heart, hope to die. You get your own, so did I. Close your eyes and show.